Welcome back. Now, this week's headlines were full of reports that Ireland could be Europe's fattest country by 2030. Just over two years ago, my next guest was struggling with his weight when he became the subject of a cyber-bullying campaign that saw hundreds of people mocking his appearance at a teenage disco. Instead of this crushing him, however, he's fought back against the bullies and taken control of his own life. To tell us more, would you welcome, please, Conor Doyle. Well, you're one of many students in this country at the moment making their way through their Leaving Cert studies. How is it going for you so far? Uh, it's going. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's not enjoyable, but it's something that has to be done, and I'm putting in a couple of hours every night, so it'll be over before I know it, I'm sure. Okay. Now, you had a struggle with this uh, incident that I mentioned. Um, uh, when did it all happen? It was about two years ago. I, um, I went to a disco, um, an underage sort of junior thing in the right venue in Swords. Yeah. And um, a photo was taken of me with my friends, which was subs um, subsequently cropped by yeah. uh, a person who I've never met. OK, let's have a look at the photo, and uh, you can tell us a little bit about it. That's you at the disco. Yeah. And if we look closer, you can see that there are X amount of likes and shares and comments. And the, uh, there was a comment written on it that we, we decided not yeah. to publish because it was too nasty about you. Uh, uh, but that's you. Tell us about you there. Yeah, that was me about two years ago. And as you saw, it's a, it's a cropped version of an of a actual photo of me with a lot of people, but it was cropped and put up on that embarrassing teen photo page. Well, and what is that? It's just a page. I, I don't really know. It's not something I'd frequent, but it's something you know, where they collect humiliating photos of people on nights out. But I would associate that with people, you know, behaving poorly on a night out. And that wasn't me behaving poorly, that was just me being me. So the idea that somebody found that, you know, incriminating enough to be humiliating and embarrassing really, like, hit me hard when I saw it. Um, How did you get wind that it was on the, the, the website? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't find it. I had, it was sort of awkward because I was shown it by my friends. My friends were texting me saying, oh, apparently this is you on the on the website and I was like, oh no, that couldn't be me, that couldn't, I doubt that's me, what would I be doing on an embarrassing page? And they were like, just have a look and sure enough it was me and, you know, it, uh, I was completely stunned, like there's no other way about it, I was like, I couldn't believe that it was me and it had so many likes and the likes just kept on growing and growing and growing, like 500, 600, 700 likes and comments about my weight, about my appearance, about like, oh, what's he even doing out, like things like that. Um, you were reading all the comments? Yeah, I just couldn't. I, I don't know why I did it, but I just thought it was a difficult thing to not read it. Got a notification and you clicked on it, and before you knew what you'd clicked on, you realised it was somebody else just hurling more abuse at you from an anonymous screen. Um, but, you know, it was before, and before I knew it, like, and my friends were really good, and they were like, oh, don't worry about it, but if anybody, like, it's impossible to not feel hurt and not feel like people are trying, just making a joke out of you people are liking it and the thumbs up symbol is the like symbol and this is like 600 people giving this the thumbs up saying that this is completely okay that this, they approve of this in a Facebook sense that that's what that means and I'm sitting there going wow 700 people think that me going out is worthy of you know is, is a joke is funny and I'm sitting there at home my self confidence any sort of self feeling of self worth I had is just going straight down hitting the floor and I'm just feeling like uh, like uh, the worst I've ever felt in my entire life subsequently seeing those photos. They were just, just the worst period of my life that I can remember. You were, what, 16 at the time, Connor? I would have been, I, would have, I think I was just turning, I was 15 turning 16, oh, yeah, right. it was about March, yeah. Very difficult time in, in the teenage yeah, life to be that age, because you're so self-conscious, aren't you? But anyway, one yeah, might be. It's, it, it's, you know, it's a, the most difficult, like it's, it's a period of change for exactly. every teenager yeah, anyway. Boys and girls. And then to, you know, People are developing and they're, you know, you know, growth and whatever. And now this is people saying that, like, oh, this is how you're growing, but this is really funny. Yeah. And you're looking at it and you're like, I, I, like this is just ruining any sort of self-confidence I had. Now, tell me about reading the comments, because it's something that, of course, you shouldn't have done. I'm not chastising you, yeah. no, I'm not. But I, but I can, you make a, such a good point about your eyes drawn to it. There's no vacation. They're writing about you. Yeah. Uh, and you're reading them all at home. Um, and what, what's going through your head? Well, like, I'm, I'm reading them, and there's some people, and I see a comment from my friends trying to defend me and saying, like, oh. leave them, like, like, commenting back to other people who are, you know, mocking me and commenting, saying, like, leave them alone, what are you doing? Yeah. And then there's a comment, and sure, one, of, one of the guys, it was on, because the page is like a, a group, there was some guy who tagged himself and took credit for it and was like, this was my work, isn't it really funny? 
like how many like I can't believe how many likes I've got for my piece of you know Facebook art. Isn't this really? Isn't this gas? Yeah. And um, you know I, I I went and I like I because he made it he made it so open about taking credit for it. Like I tried to deal with it really well, and so far as that I didn't I didn't let it impact me negatively. I tried to take it and you know how did use you it. how did you try to, to uh, take ownership of it? So, so I like I, I took ownership of it on like people who hadn't seen it. I shared it on my Facebook page, which is a really people were like that's a bit of an odd thing to do to make more people see it. But my idea was that if I show it to other people, if I go on the offense, people I'm not going to be trying to defend myself. It's like you know the best form of defense is attack. So I like let everybody see it, and then there was sort of like no more. I couldn't be it couldn't be a joke because. I was yeah. giving the impression that I was completely okay with it. And were, you, were you saying, "Look at this, it's funny," or were you saying, "Look at this, it's mean"? I was just saying, "This is this is it. This is here." But people can't like surprise me with it, trying to poke fun I at see, me. I see. Okay. This is this is here. This is a thing. I'm yeah. aware of it. You know, it's been, it's happened. But you can't try and use it again and again to try and you know attack me over and over again by what? bringing it up and up and over again. What about uh, talking to somebody at home about it? Did you did you bring it up at home, or did you make it a was it a private thing? I, you I and mentioned your, your phone or your I'm, computer. I mentioned it to my mom, and I was like, "Oh, I just saw a photo of myself. I wasn't sure that existed." But yeah, uh, I didn't. I, mean, I I regret now not talking about it more. Really, I really feel that like for anybody who goes through those sort of circumstances, you really should try and find anybody—a friend, a parent, a teacher, anybody. And wh why didn't you talk about it more? Were you embarrassed? Were you? Were you I was a little bit embarrassed. I had always been conscious about my weight. My weight, my weight was something that I had always that I'd always struggled with ever since I was a child. So this was something that I was always worried about. So I didn't, I've been told several times to lose weight, so I was like, oh, this is just another one of those times, you know. And how, was the weight become, how did the weight become an issue for you? Well, I, I, was, um, I ended up, I just from a routine thing, I ended up in hospital, and they said to me during just one of the road, routine scans, like, Connor, you're at a risk of becoming morbidly mm -hmm. obese, you know, you're in a really bad place. Um, what were you, what were you, I, mean, I suppose what I'm trying to get is, how did you get to that point? Was there something yeah, it that? was just, it was just the way I was eating and a lack of exercise, really. It was really simple things, just, just classic case. simple things. Like, I would walk to school and then on my way home, I'd stop in the shop and I'd buy food, you know, and I don't live far from my school, but I was, um, I'd just snack and then, you know, I didn't think anything wrong with that. Like, loads of people would be, you know, go into the shop and buy a drink, but I'd just buy more than I'd ever need. So I just was completely taking it way past what I needed, even for, like, just a treat. Okay. So, like, I've completely changed that. Well, tell me, d we, let's go back again to the, to the cyberbully scenario. Yeah. And you decided to try and take ownership of the, of the, of the, of the I suppose, the offence, if you like, uh, and yet you, were, you, were, you, were, you wanted to kind of deal with your own weight issue as well. As a result of the slagging you were getting, or...? Well, it was something that I'd always been conscious about, and yeah. I wasn't, obviously, not enjoying the slagging that I was getting. Right. And, like, you know, people who are trying to lose weight, you always say that, like, people... I, I've always found that you don't really... Well, you never lose weight until you want to lose weight for yourself. And it was at that moment I was like, I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't want to be in this situation ever again. Yeah. So I was like, not... As, not as a result, I'm, not, I'm never going to like thank your man for putting the photo up and not saying it was because of him, but sure. I think that that allowed me to want to lose weight and to change the way I was living at the time, so that's and what I did. That's when you, they brought you to the hospital? That brought me to the hospital and here. brought me to, you know, it was a combination of factors, different things, combination of things came together to help me lose the weight, you know, it was my own drive from that incident, yeah. brought me a long way. Um, you know, I was focused. I was that was my end goal to lose a lot of the weight, um, and then you know the hospital were great. They, the um, Temple Street was Temple it? The Street. Yeah, I was part of the yeah. Weight to Go program in Temple Street for about a year, yeah. but because of my age, I was coming to the end of it. So um, I wasn't there. I was only there for a year before I turned. I was too old to go back to Temple Street. So as well as that, I found um, I needed somewhere that I could go. I needed to maintain it when I'm outside because I need to keep focused on my weight. Okay. So I went to a, a group called Slimming World outside of... And that was a that was to you as well. That was great to me as well. To return again to the, to the cyberbullying issue, uh, your school, did your school ask you to address the younger students? Is that right at one point? To yeah, recently, so, like since I've... I, like now, looking back, I'm a lot more confident and much more capable of talking about it um, than I would have been at the time. Um, my school, yeah, called me in um, to talk to the third years uh, in my school about yeah. cyberbullying and the power of it because obviously it's something that's affected me personally so I was I'm, I'm well aware of it I'm able to talk about it very well 
and it's something that I think is important for the younger kids to hear from a young person, not from somebody to come in and talk about it like an adult or yeah. some sort of expert. I think that they find it much more easy to relate to somebody who's like in their school a couple of years ahead of them. What did you say to them? I was just very like I was very honest about it. I just spoke about my um, my own experience and like how how awful I felt. I was sitting there at my computer seeing these comments, seeing these likes and as I said, that thumbs up symbol like and me just thinking that this means that people approve of this and other people sitting at home and you like a photo yeah. that is, you know, deemed a joke, that what you're doing by clicking like is saying, I approve of this and I think this is funny. Yeah. And I think this is this should be done again with the other people. But it's a it has an unbelievable impact on you know the mindset of young people sitting at home having to look at these photos yeah um you know it, it absolutely destroyed my confidence and my psyche for ages i was in a really bad state for a bad sort of state of mind for a, a long time um but so i just sort of confronted them and i was like this is the results of this can be devastating for young people and it you know often ends in really horrible you know results so it can um i was like just trying to make them aware of the issues that can happen as a result of you know, clicking like and yeah. sharing photos that they believe are funny. There, there was a time, funny. wasn't there, that, uh, well, not, you probably don't know, there was a time before the mobile phone <laughs> that, where bullying was confined to 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, the school day, whatever that might have been. Yeah. But now bullying can follow you home and be 24-7. And it can be anonymous, which is even scarier. And it can be anonymous. And do you think that could be even scarier? That's much scarier because now you're getting abuse from people and you don't know who it is, you don't know where it's coming from. It can be people posing as other people. You know, it, it can come from anywhere and you've got no, there's nothing that you can confront about it. You can't yeah. confront your computer screen and then you can confront somebody in the yard and they show you your phone. And they're like, oh, I, don't, I didn't do that. Yeah, you I know? think that, that would worry the hell out of people like me who, as a parent, you know, to, to think that we don't really have as much knowledge as we probably would like into what guys like you at your age, when you were younger particularly, are, are getting up to or what people are doing. They, people will like things rather senselessly. Yeah, people will just scroll through their Facebook page and like and like and keep on, you know, liking all the way down without sort of just to pass the time, you yeah. know, to take a break from study. I'll go like some stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but without, it's kind of, it's kind of it dehumanized you. That's what I'm yeah, saying in your I, case. I felt awful. I was just like, people were liking this and it was giving an image to me that I was like a, I was just a thing to be like, just a, it was just a picture that I was just a picture rather than being the person yeah. who was sitting there looking at the screen. You were a gag and not a person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, was a, it was an awful feeling. I couldn't, I, I would never willingly know that people were inflicting that. It's an awful thing to imagine that people are sitting at home, probably right now, you know, posting messages, posting photos yeah. at, to, you know, willingly harm and, you know, upset other yeah. people. The, the, the online thing can be so, uh, you know, anti-social media yeah. uh, so often. And it, it, sometimes I wonder, is it like the Wild West? There's no sheriff to clean it up. There's, it's very hard to police, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Did you endeavour to get the picture taken down or removed or erased? Or? It, it was, it, I believe it was taken down. The moderators of that page said they took it down. Okay, well, that's I good. was like, it was for a time until I got a, I came up again saying, has anybody seen that picture of that ginger fella? We've lost it. So oh. I was, it was a sort of sense of false hope. I thought yeah. it was that they had decided to take it down. Yeah. But it was actually the case that they had just misplaced the photo on their computer and were not willing to, like, they, weren't, they were just were looking for more likes, more. Right. So it, it is very difficult to moderate, very difficult to try and put ownership to people because once you're in, like, a big group page, there's no direct ownership. It's just the page, and there could be a couple of different admins, and they'll be like, oh, I didn't put that. That was the other fellow who runs this page, not me, and very difficult to police on, online. And they, of course, once a picture's out there, really... Once it's, once it's, it's out, out you can't there, get you, it back. You can, you you can, can try really and get it. it. Yeah, it's the feather from the pillow. It's hard to <laughs> put it back in, isn't it? Yeah. Um, can we look at the picture of then you posted, which was the before and after, isn't that right? Yeah, I... Why so did you do this? This was sort of my way of... This was my message. I, a year later to the day, really, I put that photo up. Um, along with another series of photos, you know, sort of over the course of the year. And it was sort of my message of saying that I was never going to let, I wasn't going to let the incident, that that photo in March 2013, I wasn't going to let that, you know, be the end of me, that I was just going to take it lying down, really. I was like, I can change myself for the better, and this can be, I can use this to progress and to, you know... And you're not changing yourself. I'm not changing to, myself. To, to I'm him to, 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 to... I'm not changing myself to give appease him. Bullies, I'm changing yeah. myself because this is what I want now. This, is, I, this was the catalyst. I was like, this... I'm never going to let myself be in this sort of position again. So I was like, I'm going to improve myself and, you know, um, 
lose weight for many reasons. That was just a catalyst. But I was like, I'm unhealthy now. It was a wake up call okay, to me really that to I'm unhealthy. Yeah. And I was like, I need to, you know, get myself into a better state. But when I put this up, it was a, I left it with a message saying to the guy who posted it, yeah. like saying that, you know, putting up a photo like this can have drastic results for people who aren't like, who can take it a lot worse than I did. I took it and used it to transform myself and use it as motivation to, you know, I'm never going to be like that but again. But somebody else? But lots of other people could, you know, take it in a much worse sense. You yeah. know, it could, you know, there are, you often hear cases of people who have, you know, uh, you know attempted, you know, suicide and yeah. things like that. Um, as so a result of cyberbullying. Precisely. So give us a piece of advice for because the parents are as, as, as worried sick as the poor child in the middle of it. To those watching tonight, there could be people watching with teenagers or even younger who are being bullied online. What are you telling them, particularly the youngsters? I'd just be like, don't, don't be afraid of the anonymous people. Be willing to stand up for yourself. Know that, you know, there's... It is their weaknesses that they're putting forward by trying to show themselves as brave online. And, they, sh no, and they should talk? But they should definitely try and find somebody. I, was, I went straight and found my friends, and I was more comf comfortable talking to my friends than yeah, my family. Of course, it. at that age. So I, I'd say definitely try and confide in somebody who you trust to talk these things out with, because it's a very, that's the key, really, because you'll feel infinitely better yeah. having spoken to somebody, having, you know let your feelings out because otherwise you'll bottle it up and that's why I believe will like result in those you know catastrophic ends for people sometimes as a result of these okay. kind of photos. Well I think that I hope you talk to a lot of schools by the way I don't know if you have much time but uh, <laughs> maybe next year uh, but there's talk about the last laugh you're, you're doing your leaving cert but you've already been accepted to a particular university would you like to tell everyone what university it is? Um, yeah I've provisionally been accepted to study law in Oxford next year. Um, so, that's a good news story. <laughs> That's the last laugh for you, I think. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Well, look, I'm delighted for you. Uh, it's, 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 it's a very, very sordid and difficult world in, in the cyberbullying and everything like that. And it, we need more people like you to come forward to tell your story the way you've done. And what a great end to the story, too. So good luck in everything you do, Connor. Thanks for coming in to see yeah. us. Connor Doyle. Thanks, Neil. Good work. Well done. Thank you.